Hey everybody, this is MedTube, and today's topic is called Abnormal Cardiac Rhythms. Vivi Rao says, Organize yourself and bring rhythm to your life because you have things to do, habits to break, dreams to achieve, peace to discover, and one life to live. As you recall from our previous video, which was called How to Read an ECG, the first thing that we looked at it was the rhythm, followed by the rate. Therefore, in the next few videos, we will be learning about the abnormal cardiac rhythms and rates. And since the rhythm goes with the rate always, uh, we will be discussing them simultaneously. So, abnormal cardiac rhythms. <coughs> As you recall, the, the, the most characteristic thing of an abnormal rhythm is the RR interval is changeable. It is not constant. So, whenever you have a changeable RR interval, the first thing, the next thing you look at, is it occasional? Or is it sustained? And occasional means you just got one abnormal beat and right after that it returns to the normal sinus rhythm. Sustained means the abnormality in the rhythm persists. Occasional, we they are called extrasystoles or premature contractions. Just one abnormal beat and right after that it returns to the normal sinus rhythm. And we will be discussing this category in a separate video, hopefully. For sustained abnormal rhythms, we got three categories. One is bradycardias, one is tachycardias, and one is normal heart rate, which includes the sinus arrhythmia, which is a small category, actually. Now, the, the, each of these will, will be discussed in a separate video, but I just want to denote something first here. You're going to hear some people calling the bradycardias and the tachycardias as bradyarrhythmias and tachyarrhythmias respectively. But I personally prefer them called as bradycardias and tachycardias and the reason is they actually, most of these uh, arrhythmias, they actually have a regular rhythm. And since they have a regular rhythm, uh, calling them as bradyarrhythmias and tachyarrhythmias it will give an impression that they have an irregular rhythm, which is not really the case. Most of them have a, re a regular rhythm, but at the same time, it is not a sinus rhythm. So it's abnormal. It is not a sinus rhythm. But it could be regular, like in those, as most of the bradycardias and the tachycardias. A sinus rhythm means the origin of the firing focus is the SA node, the sinoatrial node. Sino for sinus, so it's called sinus rhythm. But in here, the bradycardias and the tachycardias, the origin of the firing focus is from the atria, the AV nodes, the ventricles, the pulmonary veins, and some other focuses inside the heart. So it is not a sinus rhythm, but a regular rhythm. This is a very important thing to understand. The other thing is that we're going to classify each category based on the regularity, the QRS complex width, and the presence of the P waves. Now again, there are lots of classifications out there, and they're based mostly on the pathophysiology or in the focus, the primary focus of the depolarization. But here, we will be classifying them based on the ECG changes, like we said, the ECG changes, like the regularity of the QRS complex width and the presence of the P waves. And the reason that I picked up this, this uh, uh, type of classification is, is that that's what you're going to really see in real life. That's what you're going to encounter with your ECGs. So understanding how to read an ECG and classify them based on your ECG findings, that's what really matters. So um, one thing also, this is a normal ECG. The thing, the, the lead that we look at to identify cardiac rhythm is usually lead 2. And lead 2, you're going to see it usually at the bottom of an ECG. In a long strip, this is called the rhythm strip. And this is to identify the cardiac rhythm easily. So lead to is usually the, the uh, rhythm strip. And the reason is that the P wave is most clearly seen with lead 2. Better than any other lead. Therefore, the rhythm strip is usually lead 2. So that's what you look at first, uh, mostly for the identifying the cardiac rhythm. So that's it for this introduction. And let's get started with the uh, extrasystoles. Thank you.